Welcome to the new season's car build thanks to our mates at Burger King. In five seasons, we've built four cars, and for the moment, let's go back in time. We had Rosie, the Toyota Corolla, that was transformed from a blue piston pusher to a red bridge-ported rotary legend. Season three saw another Toyota, an 84 Truno, go from burnt-out shell to burnout king. It was a mish, but Gadget and the boosted performance guys pulled it off. Last season, Gadget and the Boosted crew set themselves a huge task transforming a farm hack Nissan Navara into a body dropped, tubbed, twin turbo V8 monster. The lads were so close to finishing this truck they called Double Whopper, but time wasn't on their side. What they produced, however, was a New Zealand first and one of the fattest trucks we've ever seen. This season we'll be following the build of Mag and Turbo Warehouse's new toy. Over at No Cam's Motorsport we begin that story. This car was found in Queensland, Australia and was imported. Um, we imported it because it, uh, it was a one owner and um, fortunately the old guy that owned it um, bought it new from the factory but it uh, didn't last as long as the car did. So it was sitting in a carport in uh, Queensland for probably, uh, oh, probably two years and uh, we stumbled across it so we thought we'd buy it and bring it home and turn it into this project. This thing needs a turn up bad in there. Give it a ref, see how it feels. It felt pretty average and most certainly sounds it. But before a new donk can go in, Gadget insists on revitalising the old one. Though V is revitalising for your body, it's not so great for the engine. And after a quick push, it still works well. If by well you mean pissing the smoke. I think death is inevitable for this engine. Kids don't try this at home. I think we should put them in the workshop now and pull them out of What this project is all about is to build a dedicated skid wagon, an old school hack with big power that sounds mean and will decimate tyres all day long. And as you can see, the boys are busy at it stripping this car out. <laughs> Hang on, photo op time. Mag and Turbo's presence on the track includes two drift weapons, an eight second straight liner and a Super GT circuit car. This 323, however, will perform its duties on as many skid pads as possible. What will power it, you ask? If the no-cam signage hasn't given it away, you may have guessed that a chicken cooker, that's right, a rotor, will occupy the space between the struts. Being organised with your parts is absolutely vital when doing any project. Labelled boxes are a cheap and effective way to keep your bits in order. Who the hell is Carl? I don't think his bits are in order. There are often a few surprises with receiving used imports, as the boys are about to find out. Look at this man. NAF inspected the car, charged me $400 to re steam clean the car after it was steam cleaned in Australia. So, out of respect, I'm going to take these seeds, grow a gum tree, put some kookaburras in it, get some Australians around here, and we're going to drink some Forex on math. <laughs> How's that sound? An infringement win. notice and a membership card. To the Royal right. Australian Car. What? Oh, the Royal Automobile Club of, of Queensland. Oh, no. And an Australian pen. Mr. G. W. Barnfield from Brighton. That's, that, that's where we got it. Good on you, Mr. Barnfield. And what do we got here? Huh, parking ticket. Penalty, 50 bucks. Stripping your project bare can give you a good idea of what needs to be done, and this 3D3 is pretty straight. Join us next week where you'll catch this wagon getting its body pimped right here on Import X. Welcome to the BK Car Build. This week it's time to take a look at the skid wagon suspension. Ian from Raceline takes us through it. G'day and uh, welcome to Raceline. Uh, we've got all the suspension and steering for the latest build car. We've uh, got a collection of old parts that we're going to turn into new parts. 
we're starting with this, the front shock absorber. Basically that's going to be thrown away. The only part we're going to retain is the top hat which goes up through the inner guard. So the original Mazda 3D3 spring plate won't locate on that new RX-7 spring. Okay, so that goes into the new RX-7 spring plate. That locates that spring properly, coupled with the top block that we've used, that we've retained off that original strut. Yep. So that assembly there will be bolted up to the new uh, new shock absorber and the RX-7 housing. Okay, we'll start off with our housing, which has been cleaned up. It's going to have a new Munro shock absorber insert put inside it. Yep. Okay, that fits inside that housing. That gets tightened down. Yep. When that gets final tightened, our new spring with a bump stop goes on. Yeah. Then our Mazda top spring plate goes on. And then our original 323 top mount goes on. Yeah. Okay, here we've got all the old steering and suspension parts. Um, first of all, we've got our lower arm. What we'll do is we'll install new lower ball joint into the lower suspension arm. Okay, yep. that one boot's all, well it's actually missing, new boot, that's a warrant of fitness item, okay. We've got our steering assembly which is our tie rods, inner and outers, and what we'll do is replace again with a new tie rod assembly. Boots, looking at these, no good, okay. New boots, good. Last item here is going to be the steering idler. This one here, bushes it actually vanished out of it. So here we have a new item, okay, again, new boots, everything, good condition. Okay, here's the front sway bar off the build car. Now, this is the front sway bar D-bush. You can see how that fits on there, all sloppy, all worn, rusty, not nice. Okay, so this is the preparation for this end, okay, just with a bit of emery tape, just get it nice and smooth, okay. Then we put on the special nolithane grease. Lovely. Wipe that round, get a good get a good coating on it, don't be shy with it, okay? The new bush slides over. Look at that. Okay, we're back to our lower suspension arm off the build car. Now what we've got is some rubber bushes that are pretty well had it. Quite deteriorated, ugly. The bottom arm itself, where that bush goes in, also quite badly pitted. What we'll do is we'll give that a good clean up, a nice surface for our new urethane bush to work properly on. It's important that all the surfaces are clean to give that the chance to work as it should do. Okay, so these bushes are worn out, so let's go and change them. This is just a little light press that we use. Um, it's a very old and ancient machine, but it does the business. Okay, that's our old bush there. Let's go fit some new ones. Yeah, so that bit of steel work, that's been in there for 20 years, okay? It doesn't want to come out, not easily anyway. So once we do get that out, that's going to be a new urethane bush which is going to mount into that arm. That bush is going to be located there, the arm's going to sit on there, pivot nicely because that's what urethane does. Here's all our rubber components which we don't want anymore. Look how sad they look, sad, sad, sad. This is all our new lovely Nolithane, okay? That's the best product. That's where everybody goes now to get the right ride, right comfort, right everything. Here I've got our rear suspension, which comprises of a leaf spring. This leaf spring's been sent away to the spring maker. It's been reset by 60 mil for a lowering, which is gonna be in keeping with what we've done to the front. Lowering box is one way to go, but this looks nice, neat, original. Okay, hey, that pretty well wraps it up today. Um, yeah, keep yourself safe. We'll look forward to seeing this car on the strip. It's BK Car Build time, and Gadget and Brendan tackle the interior of the 323. What was Mesa thinking of this, man? What are we going to do? Yeah, I don't know. They are damn, pretty damn awful. It's going to upset some people in Dunedin, but I think we have to drop kick them out. Alright. So. That's nice. That's nice. This yep. is, this is uh, the dash pad. Um, as you can see, it's all cracked. Typical um, hot Australian sun, wrecked it all. Um, so what we can do here, we're going to uh, reupholster it, 
in just in a black vinyl, just to, just to keep it looking original. Front seats taken care of, the dash and rear seats however need an extreme makeover. Well, Brendan and Gadget have pretty much decided that the interior of this 323 is, uh, well, it's crap. So we're here at Stu's Trim Shop in Manukau City to see him put together the new dash and the rear seat. Let's go check it out. G'day Stu, how are you? How are you too? Oh, not too bad, you look pretty busy there cutting away. Ah, uh, yep, yep, I'm busy here with your dash. As you can see, Toots, we've glassed the bottom of this dash uh, to make it more rigid so that we can now work with it. Mm -hmm. Because it was fairly flimsy before, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that's, that's, that's an understatement. Um, so once we've got the glass in place, then we could flick it over and we took all the actual vinyl skin off. Because there was like these these uh, craters or whatever. Big grand canyons? Yeah, canyons all right, going on through here. So we feared those out. Once we got a nice fair surface, then we actually skinned it with our three mil closed cell foam. And what we've done is fitted a vinyl panel to the actual dash and as you can see all these little line little marks they're yep. called strike marks correspond to here so I know where I am once I'm sewing it and once I'm actually um, applying the cover to the actual dash. Yep. Well that dash looks like it's coming along quite nicely there Stu good work uh, should we go and check out that poor bench seat. So Stu what are you guys going to do to bring this back up? Well what we're going to do is recover it but we're going to recover it in a, just a black vinyl but we're going to do the original panel layout. All the, you probably can't see the definition of the panel layout. Sure, sure. Because this tartan kind of uh, yeah. does crazy things to you. It looks pretty manky. I mean, the, the previous owner in Australia, Mr. Barnfield, what were you doing on this side of the seat, mate? You know, this side's all right. This side, not so all right. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and uh, we're just going to do it as economically as we can. So you can, um, can I ask you to keep the material and, and make me a tartan skirt out of it, you know, a tilt? I'm a, I'm a I'm 2XL. Making dresses, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is an interior shop. Sorry about that. Meanwhile, upstairs, the new seat covers are underway. G'day, Ross. I see you working on a unicorn. Oh, yes. How much horsepower does it, uh, does it pull? Oh, about, uh, we're looking at about 400 at the wheel. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what are you doing? Um, oh, I'm just um, working on the seat. This will be the back, uh, pretty much where your back sits. We'll do a pleat line across there to give it a bit more interesting look and um, you'll be having the same sort of thing on the base as well. And uh, we'll just have vinyl borders and we'll top sew all around the borders so it'll look pretty flash. And uh, this one here, this is one I've almost finished, that's one of the seat backs. So how does the vinyl get applied to the foam? Um, we use a little bit of glue, just spray it on, uh, just enough to tack it together and then um, that means the foam doesn't move around behind it when, when you're actually sitting on the seat. And um, yeah, then we can just sew it up real easy. Simple yet effective. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed that you, you, you do something which I learned at finishing school and failed miserably, is the, is the reverse stitch, oh, the back. yeah, the back tack. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a pretty standard one, easy one to master, and then I'm surprised, you know. Brilliant. Actually, while you're at the machine, I've, I've, got, a, I've got a hole in my shorts. Do you think you might be able to patch that up, mate? Well, while the lads are busy working on our 3D3's interior, there's a couple of cool cars that Stu and the boys are working on here. We've got a 190 SL Mercedes, I think it's getting the whole interior treatment. They're also working on this fantastic looking Buick Super 8. Looks like the convertible top is a bit worse for wear, so uh, a new one going on then. And then they've got one of those. Now, uh, not much interior going on on this digger, but uh, just goes to show that here at Stu's Trim Shop, they can cover anything. Just imagine if you had a rotor in that. <laughs> oh, Ross, that's looking pretty good there. Where's, where's the tartan gone? Oh, it wasn't good enough, man, and we had to get rid of it. Um, basically, we've just replaced it all with uh, black vinyl. Um, looks a hell of a lot sexier than it did. And also, we've got a, um, a nice brand new dash. We uh, reskinned it, we uh, filled in all the holes. It's reinforced with fiberglass underneath and just covered in black vinyl as well. Our vinyl's looking good. No stains on those seats. You better not stain it, bro. Well, thanks for that, Ross. That interior is amazing, so you better 